suggesting for the online audience. <laughs> Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17. After Paul and Silas passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days argued with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This is the Messiah Jesus, who I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some ruffians in the marketplace, they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. While they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. When they could not find him, find them, they dragged Jason and some of the believers before the city authorities, shouting, These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has entertained them as his guests. They are acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. The people and the city officials were disturbed when they heard this. And after they had taken bail from Jason and the others, they let them go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And one other reading, this time from the book of First Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before God our Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And so you became imitators of us and of the Lord. And in spite of the persecution you received, and the word of joy which inspired the Holy Spirit so that you would become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has surrounded, has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, I've been making you hold paper and a marker for a while now. And now you get to find out what we're going to do with it. Find, uh, you'll also probably want something relatively firm to write on. Don't switch yet. No, go back. Don't, don't let them see. All right. I want you to divide your paper roughly in half. Now you can pick either side for this next instruction. Draw me a dog. A dog. Draw a dog. Don't worry, you're not gonna be graded. We're not handing these into an art teacher. Just Draw me the best dog you can. All right, it looks like most people are about done. 
So now turn to the other side of your piece of the other half of your piece of paper. Now I'm going to ask you to follow me step by step through some instructions. All right. First, on your piece of paper, give me roughly that oval shape. Okay, now, connect one more oval shape to that oval shape. I haven't lost anybody yet, have I? Okay, good. All right, number three. We're gonna put some ears on the side of that top oval shape. Little triangles. All right, show them the next one. A nose and a tail. All right. Now you need some eyes and then that little mustache thing that makes the, the mouth shape. Mine's turned our feet so far. And now you just need some music notes for feet. All right, now take a look at your two pictures. How'd you do? Yeah. And Okay. Than the exactly the same. Stevens are exactly the same. Okay. You got two different breeds of dog over here, I right hear. All right. Yeah. When I did this earlier this week, I had a stick dog. You've probably drawn stick people. I drew a stick dog. It had a tiny little neck and a great big head. But then when I walked through it step by step, with a little help, a little guidance, draw this circle, then the oval. I did a little better. Yeah. It's still, I mean, this is not high art, but this is recognizably a dog. My stick figure could have been a dog or a cow or a cat or, uh, yeah. I didn't get into this line of work because I was good at art, is my point. <laughs> Hang on to these pictures. We're going to talk about them again in a second. But before I get to that, I want to tell, talk to you a little bit about the scripture that the scriptures that we read together tonight. We started out in the book of Acts. We've covered a lot of territory from last week when we were in Acts chapter 3 all the way out to Acts chapter 17, which is where we read from today. The big thing that has happened is that there's starting to be a switch among believers. There is a there's a thing that's happening where the newest converts are often not people who the disciples actually reached out to, but they're now the generation of people who, they went disciples, and then that first generation, and then the second generation after that. So you're starting to get more and more generations removed from somebody who actually saw Jesus and the ministry that he performed, and yet lives are still being changed, lives are still being transformed. When Paul shows up in Thessalonica, he does what the scripture says is kind of his practice. He goes to the synagogue and there starts talking about Jesus, talking about Jesus as the Messiah, as the one who they had been waiting for. Jesus comes and introduces Paul comes and introduces Jesus. Sometimes that goes really well for him. It tells us in this part of Acts that a great number of people came to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Some Jewish people from the synagogue, some uh, Greek people who were there also worshiping. Sometimes we call those folks God-fearers. A number of leading women. There was a whole movement of people who were, had come to faith in Jesus because of Paul and Silas and their testimony. Of course, there's also then the backlash. 
the backlash against these new believers who are upset the status quo, who scripture says the, did you catch the accusation that they make against these early believers? These are those people that you heard about from another place who are turning the world upside down. They've come here and now they're doing it here too. I've heard a lot of descriptions of Christians over the years, but very rarely are Christians described as the ones who are turning the world upside down. They drum up a crowd, a mob, that goes looking for Paul and Silas. They go to his host's house, they go to Jason's house, and they don't find him there. Paul and Silas have to flee for their lives. And that might seem like the end of the story, except the Bible also gives us Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. That he writes to them after he leaves and praises them for the way that they have held up under persecution. And not only that they've held up under persecution, but that their faithfulness is so well known that even before Paul and Silas come to a new place, people in the city they're going to will have already heard of them and have already heard of the Thessalonians and the faith that they share. Paul says that the word about the Thessalonians spread from Macedonia to Achaia. And if you can read anything on this map up here, Macedonia is the very northernmost part of what we now call Greece. And Achaia is now down towards the southern part of the mainland. It's as if they were saying, word has spread from Washington to California, from, from Washington to Florida, from Maine to California. It has spread far and wide. Spread far and wide that you are imitators. Imitators of Paul and Silas and imitators of Jesus. Friends, there are a lot of different definitions out there about what it is to be a Christian. There are a lot of different ways that we could describe what it is that a Christian is or says or does. But on a very fundamental level, what we ask people to do because of their faith is to try to be imitators of Jesus. To try to live your life the way Jesus would live your life. What would Jesus do if he had your job? What would Jesus do if he sat across the dining room table from the people you sit across the dining room table from? What would Jesus do if he was in the car with you and somebody cut you off. Uh-huh. Okay. I hear a couple guilty chuckles there. This is basic discipleship. Boiled down to a very simple phrase. How many of you remember of a number of years ago now the, the bracelets that people would wear that said, what would Jesus do? I wore mine for you. A long, long time. It was really a helpful way to remind you to try to be an imitator of Jesus. This imitating people of faith, imitating Jesus, imitating the generation that has come before you is the way that the faith spreads. We learn how it is about how it is to be a person of faith by imitating the people who have come before us. Now, for some of you, some of those people who came before us were people who worshiped in this building. This is our church building. As near as I can tell, this is from the late 40s or early 50s. I don't think anybody in this picture is still around, except that their legacy is. Because there's a very real chance that your Sunday school teacher's Sunday school teacher is in this picture. And if this isn't the place where you went to Sunday school, you can imagine how this works, right? That our faith is shared. Our faith is passed down from one generation to the next, often through imitation. 
Now, when I see a picture like this, when I stand in a historic building like this, often I feel the weight of carrying on what the people before me built. I look at the register of pastors who have served here. I look at the, the list of the founding members who, who birthed this congregation. And I feel a sense of responsibility to be a good descendant, carrying on that tradition. But the more I think about it, the more I think that the best way to be a good descendant is to focus on being a good ancestor. Because some number of years from now, some de number of decades from now, some other pre preacher will stand in some other pulpit and remind those people of the ones who came before them. You right now are setting the example. You are charting the course. You are showing other people how to live lives of faith, how to be imitators of Jesus. I am keenly aware, because of the young people I share my house with, just how much young people imitate the others in their house. How many of you have ever accidentally said something and then a couple hours later heard the small one in your house say the same thing? and went, oh no. <laughs> that's, the, that's sort of the shadow side of the coin. But we are given saints to look up to. Not because they lived perfect lives. In fact, it's probably better for us that they don't, because you and I don't live perfect lives either. One of the ways that we learn how to be people of faith is by imitating those who have come before us. And also, like so many of you parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles know, also then trying to live a life being worthy of being that parent or grandparent or aunt or uncle. When Paul wrote in Thanksgiving to the church in Thessalonica, he said, I am so grateful for you not only that you persevered when times were tough, but that because of your perseverance, you became a witness. Other people came to faith. Other people are enduring in faith because they're imitating you. You all started out this sermon time by trying to draw a dog on your own. Some of you, it went okay. Some of you not so well. Hopefully, when you had something to imitate, it went a little better. It went a little more smoothly. And I'm willing to bet that if you practiced it a couple times, or if you had a particularly gifted artist, and not just some picture that I downloaded off the internet, you might have been able to draw an even better dog. Friends, this is why we are given to one another. To learn from each other to care for one another, and to grow stronger in the faith because of each other's witness. And all the while, it points us back to Jesus, who did for us the thing that we could never do for ourselves, who walked the way of love, mercy, and forgiveness, whose love was so profound and so steadfast that even hanging on the cross, he would say something like, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Friends, we are sent out to love and serve this world as imitators of Christ, people who bear God's creative and redeeming word to the world, showing love and mercy and grace, and teaching others to do the same. So let's pray. God, we're grateful for the ancestors who have come before us, for those people whose names we remember and those that we don't, for preachers and teachers and Sunday school leaders, for parents and grandparents, 
for all those who showed us your love and your mercy, who showed us what it is to live lives of faith. Lord, inspire us to be examples for that next generation, that others would come to know what mercy and love look like in our workplaces, in our homes and schools, wherever we go in life, so that all that we do and say would bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.